In this video, I want to show you with my baseline how you can build a sampler in Ableton. In one of my last videos, I talked about creating a sampler from the sounds you kind of like changed or modulated. And today we will create a sampler for this uh, bass sound here. So I will quickly play what we have. So the first important thing is um, we want to kind of like sample all the notes here in our bass line. And it's important that we cover like the uh, whole range we go. So we're going from like minus two semitones from the re root note to um, plus uh, 13. So basically uh, the goer scale uh, is like minus, minus two uh, plus one plus 10 is quite common in goer. And um, we are kind of like creating a sampler for this. And there are a few things before we start creating the sampler. So one thing is um, I have a lot of processing here in my base, um, a lot of which goes gives like coloring, um, as you may have known from my like base tutorial. So I have like an EQ or a, a saturator and also compression here. And some of those I want to keep on, but um, this here, for example, is like side chaining the first note. And I want to turn it off and then later put it into the sampler because um, I don't kind of like um, want to like sidechain all my notes, but I want to kind of like uh, record them with like the most uh, flexibility I can get. So what we will do now is um, we will create a whole scale starting from like this uh, lowest note. Um, and let's include uh, all the notes we we have from like uh, bottom to top. And I always leave some space here in between. Uh, why I'm leaving some space in between is um, because I want to um, kind of like cut the tails away later. Um, also, one important thing is um, I have like different velocities here. So maybe fix that first, that we um, have all the same velocities and then we will just like walk up and also include the notes which are not on the scale. Um, as I will show you later, um, it's a little bit easier to set up your sampler if you have this and also it gives you more flexibility if you then decide that you uh, want to include uh, some more notes into your baseline. Let's crop that really quickly. Move this to the first position here. And um, now we have basically uh, our baseline. And I will quickly do something here. I will quickly cut this. Now we turn off the uh, side chaining. Yeah, I already got it off. Then we will duplicate this, freeze it and flatten it. And then we will quickly turn this on again that we don't forget it. And now we should have here uh, our frozen baseline. I think we'll take some while. Do you notice it's quite long here? Maybe it's even a little bit too long. Um, I would probably redesign this one in the envelopes but uh, for the sake of this tutorial we will just um, kind of like fade it uh, out now notice if i go here to browse show in browser we see the file where it's located uh, in our browser and you will notice this is the same file always so it's just a different position of the freeze. And we don't want that because um, when we put it in the sampler, we want a different uh, way for AIF files for it. And one thing I want to do before I uh, put it into the sampler, I will kind of like normalize it a little bit and get it like to maximum loudness or approximately. 
And now we will, with command J, consolidate them, each one individually, and then we should get like single files for them. Uh, we could already drag them into the sampler, but we will take the um, extra step and save this one in our project. Here I already created a folder sampled base. And now you can go here, show in browser, locate them. So it's uh, this one here. And then we will, oh, I got a lot of stuff in here. Um, and then we will move them basically um, here into our sample base. If you drag them over like this, then you get these ALC files, which I don't want. Let me know if you know any like, um, trick how to uh, get the AIFs instead here or the waves, but um, I didn't find one. So I will just drag those here over and then we will rename them. So notice we're starting here at uh, EB. I, I don't want to name it like that. I, I like it uh, more the other way. So I will name it like D sharp. And I think somehow it's easier to read for me. And I like it more, I don't care if it's correct or not. Um, anyways, if we use this in another scale, uh, names may change. If you prefix them with numbers, then they will be in the right order later. An easier way is to um, go into the finder. So um, we have here one, two, three, four, eight, sixteen, sixteen 16 uh, different nodes. And we will go here into show and finder. And then we see uh, our samples here. So they're all from the same time here. Um, so we should have 32 because it's like two files here. And we will just select the AIF files. Then we will copy them. And we can rename them. So now we rename them all. We will check that they are in the right order still. seems everything good. And now we have our sampler here. So the first thing uh, we will do is we will turn off all the filter and modulations which may be on. And then we drag our samples here into the zone. We are starting at D sharp one and we are ending at F sharp two. So that's how we will set our range now. We are setting it to um, D sharp one, and we will let it end at F sharp two. Yeah, exactly like this. And then you can go here under distribute ranges. This, this works only if you have taken the whole chromatic range. Um, so that's why we went every semitone up here. Um, anyways, it leaves us with more flexibility later to play it. And now we will take a listen to this and I will tell you, it should sound good. But if you do this manually, then you have to take uh, care that this little R is actually in the right position. So um, sometimes it happens that this root here is not the root which you placed in here. So if you don't do the distributing, it may be somewhere here and then it will pitch down or up your uh, stuff depending on where it is in the sampler. But now we basically um, have a resampled baseline here and we will now go and try it with the original progression here. So let's place that here. Turn the base here off. Turn this one off. And now we will turn on the side chaining again because we still want to side chain the first bass note and also um, make sure that you maybe need to adjust some of the velocities here again um, so that you have the right uh, levels also maybe here. Um, so you make sure that it kind of like sounds as you want and not just rely on that it sounds as you want. So 
So let's check quickly. Um, our kick is like minus 11, our base is like minus 12. So um, looks good, but our old base was uh, even further away, but I think it still sounds cool. Um, maybe also give it like a look in the spectrum if everything looks alrighty. Peaking a little bit too high, so. Probably uh, through the normalizing we did. And now we are kind of like peaking at a similar level. I mean, we cut some tail, maybe it's from that, um, but um, I'm quite happy with that uh, resampled bass actually. The sampler we built you can also use for leads or for FX. If you want to know how you can kind of like get more out of your FX and get your own note on it, then you should watch this video.